Revelation chapter twenty-one, verses three and four. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, "Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and He will dwell among them, and they shall be His people, and God Himself will be among them. And He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there." Will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any mourning, or crying, or pain. The first things have passed away. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and all the TV viewers, this is the seventeenth session on the Heaven Lecture Series. In the last session, I told you about different living environments of heaven. When I explained about the residence of the third kingdom of heaven at the last session, I spoke about uptown court that the Forbes magazine issued as the world's most expensive house. Today, I want to give you one more explanation about that house. The Forbes magazine ranked the uptown court as the world's most expensive house, only among the houses on sale. In fact, there are more expensive and more splendid houses or palaces where world-renowned rich men or kings and royal families live. But those houses have never been on sale, and no one can measure the price. So the Forbes magazine measured only the houses on sale. Dear brothers and sisters. Heaven is not just the world in the dreams the children imagine while they read, you know, fairy tales. It is not an imaginary country that people desire and long for, who are tired of their life on this earth. Heaven is actually much more beautiful and happier than the imaginary world in the fairy tales. It does exist in reality. Many people of this world think this visible world is everything, but this world is only a shadow, and the actual entity is the kingdom of heaven. Also, we live in this world only for a moment, but in kingdom of heaven, we will live forever. I'm telling you in detail about the heavenly kingdom, which exists in reality. The First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 19 says, "If we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are of all men most to be pitied, and we walking a narrow way, not watching what we should not watch, not going where we should not go, and not doing what we should not do. How poor are we?" If we have hoped in this life only, but we believers are not to be pitied, but truly we are blessed because the heavenly kingdom surely exists. We are blessed because we can prepare ourselves to enjoy the greatest of all happiness in that kingdom of heaven. Therefore, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you may accept this message in complete faith and hope. So that you will enjoy delight and happiness in the kingdom of heaven. TV channels in many countries are showing, you know, uh, UFOs nowadays. Uh, France and Japan showed UFO pictures on their TV channels. And uh, you also watched it.、Uh, can you show it again, broadcasting room? Since another team in our church is going on a pilgrimage trip to the Holy Land,、uh, look at the picture. Uh, that was taken、uh, when I was taking a picture near a pyramid. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the verse four from today's scripture says, 
and He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be any death, there will no longer be any mourning, or crying, or pain. The first things have passed away. That's right. To begin with, in the heavenly kingdom, our body will not suffer from any disease or stress. So, we will always be healthy and refreshed. Also, we will, we will not ever have to shed any tears of sorrow or get frustrated due to difficult situations or to mourn about anything. We will know and experience only the delightful and happy things. We will always be full of thanks and praises as we are touched by the love of Father God each and every moment. How happy will it be if there is no sorrows, worries, pains, death, and something like that? Wouldn't it be nice if there is nothing to worry about? You, you know, man's mission members, worry about you know, how to support their own family. Even if they have a job, They also worry about you know, being fired because the you know, economic situation is not so good in this country. They have to be recognized. They have to be promoted. You know, there are envy, jealousy, arguments, anxieties, and stuff. There are a few people who don't have such things. Even if they have fortune, they still have something to worry about. They even have more to worry about. In my case, except worrying about the kingdom of God, I have nothing to worry about. You know, for myself and, my fa and you know, for my family, I've never worried about it. I leave them up to God. I don't worry, you know, what if I got sick? What if I, you know, made an accident or disaster? I don't worry about it. No anxiety. Nothing. Only for the spiritual things about God's kingdom. That's it. Just by being in the space of the kingdom of heaven, we will feel great peace, you know, great peace and happiness. Additionally, God has prepared many kinds of resort facilities to give His children more delight and greater happiness. Also, I told you in the last session, those who go into the second kingdom of heaven can receive one recreational facility that he likes the most in his individual house. But those who have cast off all forms of evil and become sanctified will go to the third kingdom and they can have whatever kinds of recreational facilities that they want to have in their own house. Those who go into the city of New Jerusalem will also have whatever kind of facilities they like. But the size and the scope of them will be much greater and better than those of third kingdom. Now, what kind of resort or recreational facilities does the first kingdom of heaven have? In the first kingdom, there are some resorts and recreational facilities that they are for public use. I already told you that the houses in the first kingdom of heaven are like apartments of this world. In apartments of this world, they may have some facilities inside the complex for all the residents to use. In the same way, in the first kingdom as well, there are public resort facilities. For example, there are parks that have wonderful looking trees and pretty flowers. And there are also lakes and in the promenades that are for public use. In the same way, people will have common use in you know, swimming pools, golfing courses, tennis courts, or amusement parks. Uh, these public facilities are maintained by the angels to be at the best condition all the time. So even when you know, many people use them, they don't get dirty or worn out, and they are never out of order. Also, when God's children want to use a certain kind of facility, the angels help them in anything that they want to do so they can use it without any difficulty. There are no 
personally assigned angels in the first kingdom of heaven. But there are angels there to assist the children of God whenever necessary. In the first and the second kingdom of heaven, the angels do not serve individuals by reading their minds like in New Jerusalem or the third kingdom. It's necessary to speak to the angels to get help. There are also many angels in paradise, but the main role of the angels in paradise is not to help the children of God, but to maintain various facilities in paradise. I told you that there are no personally owned houses in paradise, but there are places similar to public assistance shelters. Then, does that mean there are no recreational facilities in paradise? Even in public assistance shelters on this earth, they have TVs for everyone to watch. They also have sports facilities and equipment like tables for table tennis or like in the children's playgrounds. Likewise, in paradise, there are some recreational facilities and some facilities for sports or games. But the equality and the level of significance of those facilities are very different from those in other places in heaven. For example, just think about a playground. A playground in a public daycare center and the one in the high-end apartment complex will be very different in its significance and quality. It's like comparing the differences between Disneyland and other amusement parks in Korea like Seoul Land, Lotte World, and Everland to a playground in your town. Even on this earth, each amusement park has great differences from each other. And in the same way, recreational facilities in the heavenly kingdom are also very different in their quality and size in different dwelling places. And in the third kingdom of heaven and in New Jerusalem, you can have them in your own house. So how amazing this is! Also, the amusement parks in the heavenly kingdoms are much bigger than even Disney World. And the rides are much more fun and exciting than those of this earth. In heaven, we will have a perfected heavenly body. So, we will not have any, of, any, any kind of fear. So, even when we ride on roller coasters, we will not feel any fear. You know, some girls and ladies, because of their fear, they cannot ride on such things. You know, some of them look pale after they ride on it. You know, they are seized by fear. We will just feel the excitement and thrill of it, so we will be so happy and delighted. Therefore, even those who cannot ride on those rides because of fear of height or timidity can enjoy those things as much as they want in the heavenly kingdom. And the same principle can be applied in this earth, too. That is, if you go into spirit, you can have control over the physical environment, so you can enjoy even the scariest ride. Rise in the heavenly kingdom will never be out of order. But even if your body were to fly out during the ride, you will never get injured. You can even land on the ground like a master of martial arts or angels may hold you. Why don't you imagine riding on a Viking ride with the you know, dear Lord and screaming with joy as you ride? You know, how happy and glad you'll be. You know, when people ride on a roller coaster, they scream, right? But there are two kinds of scream. One is from out of joy, and the other is from out of fear. Well, would you like to know how to get rid of such fear? So that, you know, you don't need to fear anything? I'll tell you. I used to have a fear of heights before I met God. And when I was a kid, you know, my father told me those you know, horror stories, you know, like the stories about ghosts. When I needed to go to a restroom, you know, there was no electricity. 
So when it was at night, it was so dark. And my father told me about ghosts who pulled the hair in a dark restaurant. A story like a woman who drowned in a well, and that woman came out of the well at night. My father told me about those, you know, horror stories and tales when I was a kid. It was for fun, and I enjoyed listening to such stories. But when you, know, when I tried to go to a restroom at night, then I was afraid. But after I accepted the Lord, such a fear was gone. Why? Because I changed my mind. There are, you know, they were untruth. Even if they exist, why is it that I needed to worry about? All I have to do is to drive them away in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then they will go away. Since I can control them and rule them, there was nothing to fear of. If there is a haunted house or something like that, I want to go in there. I want to sleep there. There's nothing to fear of. I enjoy riding on a roller coaster. Even if I go up a high tower or something like that, then I don't have, you know, any fear of heights. I rather enjoy it. Why? Because I changed my mind. The roller coaster is operating hundreds of times a day. Or, you know, hundreds of thousands of times a year. But why is it that it's going to be an out of order when I ride on it? And since Father God is with me, how can an accident happen? Why do you need to worry about it? Don't worry and just enjoy it. Right after this church was founded, you know, we went to a theme park with you know quite you know elderly people. And during a you know servant of God seminars, when I rode on an you know, aerial cable car, there came a fear of heights a little bit. And then I changed my mind. I will enjoy looking down at scenery from it. I don't need to worry. I will never be out. You know, it will never be out of order. Even if it goes out of order, and I fall down, I'll be rather happy because I will go to heaven. So let's enjoy riding on it. What about that? So I changed my mind like this, and I could enjoy it. I could feel the fear of heights that I used to have when I was a kid, but it was gone. It was gone from me. Since then, I've been able to enjoy whatever it is. All you need to do is to change the way you think. When you think positively, then it will change. Furthermore, on this earth, you often have to wait in a long line in amusement parks. But if you have those things in your own house, you don't have to wait. You can enjoy them as many times as you want. Also, you can invite your loved ones and enjoy together. So, you know, how exciting it will be. But because most of the facilities in the Second and the First Kingdom and Paradise are for public use, they have more restriction on using them. Also, the quality of amusement parks will be much lower. Not all the big amusement parks in New Jerusalem are present in every other dwelling place. Just as the quality of the amusement parks on this earth are different, the better the heavenly dwelling places, the better their respective facilities. But it doesn't mean that you know, amusement parks in paradise will have only simple things like swings, slides, and seesaws. Even the amusement parks in paradise will have roller coasters and merry-go-rounds and other rides. But the quality of those will be less than the facilities of other heavenly dwelling places. Also, those in New Jerusalem can use recreational facilities at any time they want. But those in paradise cannot use them so freely. They don't have so many chances to use them. For example, those who are living in Seoul can use the amusement parks relatively more easily because they are close to Seoul. 
But for those who are living on isolated islands, it's not easy to go to amusement parks even if they want to go. They can visit those in the places only in some special occasions. Likewise, there are, of course, the facilities in paradise, but not everybody can use them at any time they want. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in heaven, other than using recreational facilities, there are many more things from which we can have fun and excitement. Some may think that it would be boring to live with a heavenly body in heavenly kingdom, but even a heavenly body feels fun. Flashly fun will change, and after some time, we feel tired of it. But spiritual fun is always new and refreshing. Even on this earth, we can see that our love will be deeper and our happiness will be greater to the extent to which we cultivate spirit in us. Now, someone told me that you know, she had a hard time because she hated someone. She said she hated someone. She didn't want to look at her. She didn't want to see her. But then, while she was praying, she felt something like water came into her body and it filled the body. Then, she felt her body was filled with love. Then she started to miss that person. So she met her and she made peace with that person. When I heard it, I was touched. She said, when she started to have a conversation with that person without any ill feelings against that person, she felt it was so cool. So she said, she misses the person. She used to hate the person, but she is changed and she misses the person. There is another lady. She said, she used to hate her husband. She said, you know, her husband seemed to show off, but she thought he had nothing to show off. She thought she was better than him. She thought she was smarter than him. So she ignored him, and she neglected him. Then after she received the prayer for love, she came to have love in you know, a feel in her heart. She came, to her, you know, she came to hate her husband no more. She now misses her husband. She wants to love him. So she confessed that she can now evangelize him. So many people came to me and gave their testimonies about love. So when you become a man of spirit, then you can have love as much as you have become a man of spirit. The more you cultivate your heart into spirit, the more you can have and the deeper your love. When you, you know, have such a love, it's easier for you to come to spirit. Also, the because, you know, the, the heart of spirit does not change. If you like something, you will like it forever, and you will not ever feel bored or tired of it. Now, what else are there in heaven that will give you fun and excitement? First, just as people on this earth have their hobbies, develop their skills, and make their lives richer, we will also have hobbies in heaven. You will enjoy and learn not only the things you like on this earth, but also the things that you forsake in order to be faithful to the kingdom of God. For example, if you really want to learn a certain musical instrument like pianos, you can learn it in heaven. Whether it is piano, a violin, flute, drums, or any other instruments, if you want to learn how to play it, you can learn it and play it. And in heaven, everyone becomes very wise and it will not take long time to be able to play those instruments well. You can quickly learn it and master it. Other than these hobbies, there are also many sports games that you can play. But there will not be any competitive sports like wrestling or boxing, which can harm the opponent. The games will usually be in a competition of individual or team skills. For example, we may play some games like volleyball, basketball, 
football, baseball and tennis. Or we can compete as individuals in games like skiing, golfing, bowling or swimming. Also, we will be able to enjoy some sports that people usually cannot enjoy on this earth, such as you know, hang gliding, you know, windsurfing, or yachting. Well, look at the screen. Some people come to ride on that hang glider. I thought, you know, people cannot drive the hang glider, but, you know, just go, you know, and then I thought just they just go where the wind blows, but I was wrong. You know, it can make turns, and it can even drive rear. They can stay in the air quite a long time and enjoy looking down at the surface of the ground. They say that, you know, it is so exciting that they cannot stop it once you do it. They say that you know, they cannot forget the thrill that they feel in the sky. In heaven, we can quickly learn how to ride on them. And even if we make mistakes, there is no danger of accidents or injury. Dear brothers and sisters, just imagine flying across the sky of the heavenly kingdom, taking in all the beautiful scenery from a hang glider. Also imagine yourself windsurfing or yachting in fresh and cool wind. Don't you feel so clear and refreshed? And doesn't happiness flow into your heart? In the heavenly kingdom, there are many, many happy and joyous things. The sports facilities or the exercising equipments will not be dangerous at all. They are made with wondrous materials and decorated with gold and jewels to add to the joy and happiness when we exercise. Also, the exercising equipments in heaven will be individually accommodating according to the desires of the players to increase the enjoyment of the user. For example, let's say you are playing a bowling game. The bowling balls and pins will change their colors as the players want, and the positions and the distance will be controlled automatically. Also, when you bowl, the pins will fall with such clear sound, giving out beautiful lights. Of course, the bowling ball is made of gold, and the bowling pins too. You will not have any evil desire to win against all other opponents and stand above them. So, to win the game is actually to give more joy and benefit to the other people. Then you may wonder, what is the meaning of a game in which there is no winner? But in heaven, we don't have the joy by winning a game or a competition. When you play a game, the heart of the man of spirit is different from the heart of the man of in the flesh. If you come into spirit, you may understand it. The man of spirit does not play a game only to win it. The man of spirit plays games considering others and sometimes lose the game purposely. When I go on a vacation, or you know, go on a church meeting and have some you know free game and free time. Then I usually you know play games. Sometimes I feel like to lose a game. And then you know I happen to you know make a mistake because I don't try hard to win the game. I make a mistake. Why do I want to lose a game? Sometimes, you know, we play games for money. We put a certain amount of money, and the first winner gets this much, and the second gets that much, and stuff. When someone, you know, whom I play a game with, has his father's birthday coming, then I feel like to lose a game. If he wins, he will get that money, and use it for his father's birthday. 
course, I give him money to prepare for his father's birthday. But by paying, you know, by playing games, he can get more money. Then it's easy, isn't it? All I have to do is just making a mistake. Then he will win the game. Now, if I play this kind of game, I feel so happy even though I lose the game. But I must be careful not to lose the game all the time. Because, you know, it will make others bored. So sometimes I have to win the game so that other people can enjoy the game as well. We will be joyous enough just by enjoying the games with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Of course, there are also games in which we have fun through a competition in goodness. God explained one of those games to me. When children of God have a heavenly banquet, some of them go to the flowers and breathe in the scent of the flower, and then they come back and give out the fragrance in competition. According to how much scent they breathed in and how much they pleased others with that scent, and according to how well they mixed all the scents together, the winner will be decided. There are times to win a game or lose a game, right? You cannot win a game all the time. Not every perfume has smells the same. You know, they are all different. And there are expensive ones and not so expensive ones. You know, I think it's strange. No one can cook the same as my wife cooks. She cooks many foods. You know, she cooks many different types of noodles too. But I have never you know, tried a food that has the same taste as my wife cooks. Not even a restaurant. I haven't met anyone who cooks like my wife does. You know, there are people who have lived with us for you know one, two, five, or ten years. Then I think you know they can imitate the taste, but they can't. They want to do it, but they can't. When there is a church event, some cook, you know, you know, many things like stew or others. Then I come to think, what if they can cook and make the same taste as my wife makes? Then everybody will love it. When I go to home visiting, they serve me, you know, kimchi. But the uh, taste is totally different. Just like this taste, no matter how long you practice, There are differences between skills, and you can win the game or you can lose the game. And it makes the game interesting. Do you think it's interesting if one man wins the game all the time? Likewise, even when we play some kind of you know, competitive games, it is only to give more benefit and joy to others. It's not that We ourselves will win and boast of ourselves, but through this kind of game, we will give joy to others and also to the Father God, so that you know, we will also be loved by God. Likewise, in heaven, in just playing one game, we do not seek our own benefit, but everything is done in goodness, so how beautiful a place it is. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Today, with the development of science, some people enjoy computer games or some games with various kinds of equipment. Those who like these games may wonder whether there is a game of that kind even in the kingdom of heaven. Of course, there are many more kinds of entertainment, entertainment from which we can feel much greater fun than those of this world. We are going to live in heaven forever. It should not be boring. You think it's okay with singing just praises in heaven? You will never get tired in heaven. So you will not be sleepy. 
So there are you know, many things to enjoy. Many rides, many sport games, and something like that. Even when we praise, there will be many different types of dancing too. We will sing praises in a ferry. The ferry will be made of you know, crystal so that you can see through fish. Fish will sing along with us. Fish will dance and jump around the ship. There are many things to do when we go to heaven. Furthermore, they don't cause any tiredness or harm the vision like in you know, the computer games. Nothing in heaven is boring or tiring. Rather, everything is made in such a way that it will only have a good and positive influence on us. Many children like dolls. Then, are there dolls of that kind in the heavenly kingdom as well? Dolls in this world have no life, so they do not understand their owners or talk with them. Still, children like them so much. They care for them, wash them, clothe them, and they give their love to them. Some children do not eat at all for days when they lose their dolls. Some children just cry doing nothing for many days. Even though dolls do not have love and life, you know, children love them. But even though the owners give their love like that, the dolls never understand the love of the owners. But it's different in heaven. If a child likes a doll, but has given it up because she loves God more, in the kingdom of heaven, she will receive something like, I mean, I mean something much better than the doll. She may be given an angel which becomes like a doll to her. But this angel will talk to the owner and act according to the desires of the owner. So, or she may be given a lovely pet animal, so that you know, she will feel much more fun and delight than playing with a doll. In heaven, there are many kinds of cultural events that give us happiness and moving emotions to us, other than you know, what I have told you today. There are many parties and performances about these things, I'll tell you in the next session. Those praise singers and dancers and members of you know, Selem in the Korean traditional music team, if you go to New Jerusalem, you will be the top and the first rated singers and dancers, the first class performers in heaven. Just imagine how many singers and actors are there in heaven. And if they go to the second kingdom of heaven, they will be the first class performers in the second kingdom of heaven. Let's say, you passionately praised the Lord and gave great glory to God. But then, you quit it in the middle. Then you will not be singing in heaven. If you happen to quit it because of your age, then it's fine. If you, you know, have to quit it because you are assigned a position such as you know, a president, of a certain mission, then it's fine too. You didn't give it up. You managed it well till the end. But if you quit it due to your personal reason, then it is giving it up in the middle. You cannot sing in heaven. In the past, so many fans followed in a good actor. If there was filming, then you know, so many crowds would come. It was true in 1960s and 1970s. Still the same. A popular celebrity has many fans wherever he or she goes. So does those parade singers and dancers of this church. All the people in heaven will recognize them. Even those in paradise or the first heavenly kingdom, they will also watch all the events held in New Jerusalem. So, you know, they will recognize those singers and dancers. What a glory it is. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in this session, 
I talked to you about the resort facilities and the recreational life in the kingdom of heaven. I explained that in heaven, God gives to us according to what we have done and sown on this earth. So everything will be different in each dwelling place. For example, the angels in paradise do not personally serve or help the children of God, but they just maintain the facilities in paradise. Then you may think, even on this earth, in good hotels or amusement parks, the service is so good. And so, isn't paradise worse than this? But let me ask you a question. Is there any place on earth where you can have good service without paying for it? Do you have to tip an angel? No, you don't need to. But you have to in this earth. They serve you because you will tip them. When you go to a nice hotel, you know, depending on what kind of car you are driving, their treat will be different. If you drive an exotic car or expensive luxurious car like, you know, Mercedes or a Ferrari, they will greet you from the gate of the hotel and open the door for you. But what if you drive an old used car? Then, you know, they don't even greet you. They don't open the door for you. Even though you are the guest of the hotel, their treat becomes changed completely. On earth, attendants serve you according to what you pay them. And for a better service, you must pay them more. Sometimes, when you drive an exotic car, you are served better by those, you know, because they think, you know, you, know, you will pay better. Now think of the people who went into paradise. They didn't do anything for God with faith on this earth, but only by complete grace of the Lord, they escaped from horrible punishment of hell. You think I'll be hurt? I don't care. It doesn't you know, matter how they treat me. But until you come to spirit, your heart will be different. Your heart will be disheartened. Actually, it's nothing but though. So, they will give thanks forever just by the fact that they were saved and they are in paradise. May you work faithfully for the kingdom of God and for other souls with thanks and desire to pay back the grace of the Lord. And may you receive more valuable rewards and enjoy greater happiness and joy in heaven. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. I will pray for all those who are sick. Place your hand on sick parts and infirmities of your body and receive this prayer. If you are not ill, place your hand on your chest and receive this prayer for the desires of your heart. The work of the Almighty God transcends time and space. He will also work according to your faith. No matter where you are, when you receive this prayer in faith, you will surely experience the astonishing power of God. Hallelujah! The Almighty God of love, please lay your hand on all your children and on all GCN viewers who receive this prayer on television. Lay your hand and manifest your work that transcends time and space on every viewer who receives this prayer in faith in every corner of the world. Give each of them the faith by which they can believe and drive out all the power of negative thoughts and doubts. Drive out all trials and sufferings. Scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and cleansed with the blood of our Lord from head to toe, the five viscera and the six entrails, each joint and all nerves, tissues and cells. Manifest the power most high of the creation. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, bacteria and weaknesses, go away. All contagious diseases, go away. All terminal diseases, endemic diseases and newly discovered diseases, be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit, be cleansed, be strengthened. Let there be healing of gastric cancer, lung cancer, uterine cancer, intestinal cancer, and skin cancer, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, 
heart diseases, lung diseases, all kinds of women's diseases, hypertension, hypotension, diabetes, skin diseases, and inflammation. May polio, paralysis, arthritis, and herniated disc be healed and made perfect. May the pain from lumbago, headache, and neuralgia disappear. May all after effects from a variety of accidents be cleansed and made perfect. May cold, flu, fatigue from sickness, and thyroid diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and be cleansed. Epilepsy, autism, depression, nerves breakdown, and all kinds of mental diseases go away. May all darkness be driven away and let there be joy and peace in their hearts. Father God, by the power most high of the creation, may all that is weak be made perfect and whole again. May all that is paralyzed become loosened, and may the crippled walk and jump. May the dimmed eyesight be brightened. May those with troubled hearing hear well. May the blind receive sight. May the deaf come to hear. May the mute begin to speak. Father, bless those who are unable to conceive. Rejoin broken bones, and make all burnt parts of the body perfect and whole. Cleansed by the fire of the Holy Spirit, those who suffer from addiction of narcotics, drugs, toxicants, and poison. May the dead and dead nerves and cells revive. May all darkness be forced away, and may all evil spirits be driven out. I command, in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, go away. May all their messengers be also driven out. May all the power of darkness, evil spirits, wicked spirits, dishonest and crafty spirits, estranging spirits, deceiving spirits, be driven out. May all chains of injustice be loosened. Darkness, go away. May the light come. Father God, strengthen their spirits as well as their flesh. Give them strength to call out to you. Give them strength to throw away their sins and become sanctified. As each of their soul gets along well, may all in life go well with them. Answer the desires of their hearts and prayers. Give them faith, hope, and love, and may their families also come to hear and believe in the good news. Protect them from accidents and disasters, and bless them to lead prosperous lives without hindrance. Protect all God's children at home, work, and business with the fiery wall of the Holy Spirit and the eyes of the Lord that are like blazing fire. Bless them whether they come in or go out, and bless them to lend to many people but borrow from no one. Give them wisdom and understanding, and allow them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Give all ministers and workers of the Lord the ability to carry out the tasks you have given them well. May there also be great revival at each church. Lead your children so that they may give glory to you whether they eat or drink or whatever they may do in life. Manifest your work so that their lips may testify, I have met him, I have experienced God, I have received his answers, and I have received God's blessing. Father God, thank you. May you alone receive all the glory. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.